what's good? Welcome into the show. You're watching Philadelphia Eagles. Now I'm Chase Sr. And coming up, we're going to talk about 10 Eagles who will ball out under the team's new coordinators and offensive coordinator Kellen Moore and defensive coordinator Vic Fangio. And we're going to give you a refresher as far as what Moore and Fangio bring to this team with their respective schemes offensively and defensively. You're going to be informed on today's show, and that's what that's why we do what we do. First, if you're excited for the 2024 Eagles season, I'm jacked up. I'm hype. If you're with me, I want you to hit that thumbs up by kind of like the video. Eagles OTAs got underway this week. We've had the opportunity to look at this roster, see clips of the Eagles on the practice field. It gets the juices flowing, and with that, naturally, we're talking some football here on the show this week. Make sure you hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. All right, let's get the show underway here. What changes can we expect with Kellen Moore and Vic Fangio taking over for Brian Johnson and Sean Desai as the offensive and defensive coordinators for the Philadelphia Eagles here in 2024? Let's start off on the offensive side of the rock. What you can expect from Kellen Moore, it's going to be much different from Brian Johnson's offensive play calling and Nick Sirianni's offensive scheme with Moore you're going to see an aggressive passing attack. He uses a lot of shifts and motions. He has a lot of creative packages and formations in which he can flex positions out wide and put them in positions that we don't normally see in an Nick Sirianni offense. The offensive system is malleable. He makes quality adjustments in-game and throughout the season, and he really does have a diverse running game. I think back to when Kellen Moore was the OC for the Dallas Cowboys. That's when Ezekiel Elliott was a highly productive running back, one of, if not the best running backs in the league, and a lot of that was because of the play calling, the play designs, and the scheme from Kellen Moore. Furthermore, here's what you can also expect from Moore going specifically into those points that we just showed you on your screen, the pass game. He is going to stretch the field from sideline to sideline and vertically and challenge every blade of grass. He really likes play action and deep crosses. And with that play action, I think we might see Jalen Hurts operating from under center a little bit more as compared to the last couple of years. And with Hurts, Kellen Moore is going to try to get him in rhythm with clean throws from a clean pocket. The route tree for these Eagles wide receivers is going to be much more diverse than last year when a lot of the routes from A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith were simple routes, and because of that, everything seems so predictable because Nick Sirianni didn't make those adjustments, and he didn't even have pre-snap motion as Philadelphia was dead last in pre-snap motion rate. The unique and creative formation, something that I'm really excited to see. And what all of this does, it helps the offense create mismatches against the opposing defenses because when you put a player in motion and you have these creative formations, it helps you get cues from the defensive alignment that the respective defense is in. Kellen Moore is going to favor a zone run scheme, very familiar to what the Eagles have done the last couple of seasons. The weakness for Kellen Moore, he is prone to giving up pressures at times because he will spread things out. They don't go a lot of bunch or heavy, but the creativity definitely going to be refreshing. And then with Vic Fangio, here's what you can expect from the new Eagles defensive coordinator, who's a defensive savant and is going to go down as one of the best defensive minds in the history of football. There is a looming question. Has the modern-day offense found a way to beat a Vic Fangio-led defense? Maybe, but I thought Fangio's defense with Miami last year performed in a solid way considering the bevy of injuries that Miami had. It's going to be a 3-4 defense, a lot of nickel and 40 fronts, where you have a nose tackle lined up right over the center and your inside linebacker is not going to really be a part of the blitz packages. He's going to play off ball a lot, but I do expect Vic Fangio to make some adjustments there with Devin White because he's capable of getting after the quarterback. Vic Fangio, a fan of man coverage principles that fits what Darius Slay and Quinian Mitchell are able to do. 
has a lot of versatility in his defensive calls. His defense is designed to limit explosive plays. So because of that, he is not going to blitz a ton. He will blitz in a timely manner, but not going to blitz a lot. And because of that, some people might get frustrated by the Eagles playing off man because they're trying to avoid the explosive play and keep the opposing offense in front of them. And really, for a Vic Fangio defense to be successful, you have to win up front so that that makes your secondary's job a lot easier. Now to the big question for today's show, and really two questions, I should say. Who balls out under Kellen Moore? Who balls out under Vic Fangio? Let's start off, once again, on the offensive side. Who balls out under Kellen Moore? I think it's these five players here. Jalen Hurts, the quarterback. Saquon Barkley at running back. A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith as your wide receivers in Dallas Goddard. You might look at that list and say, well, of course, Chase. Well, last year, it was very frustrating to watch this Eagles offensive unit. This year, I think it's going to be a more seamless and stress-free viewing experience for all of us because you go through Kellen Moore's accomplishments as an offensive coordinator in this league. The Cowboys were ranked 6th, 17th, 1st, and 4th in Moore's four years in running the offense. The first year under Jason Garrett, and then three under Mike McCarthy. During Moore's four years in Dallas as OC and play caller, the Cowboys averaged 27.7 points per game. That was second most in the National Football League behind who? Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, and the Kansas City Chiefs at 28.8. And during his five years in Dallas as either quarterbacks coach or OC, the Cowboys had the fourth most passing yards in the NFL with 256 per game. So naturally, I think Jalen Hurts is going to be able to rebound and get back to the 2022 form. Dak Prescott played very well under Kellen Moore, at times a near MVP level. So naturally, I think Hurts will do the same, and he's going to have a really impressive 2024 campaign. And then you look at Saquon Barkley. Ezekiel Elliott, highly productive, a dominant running back under Kellen Moore because he has trust in the running game. He's not going to stray away from it, and Saquon is insanely gifted. He has complementary weapons around him to make his job easier, and speaking of that point, finally a good offensive line. He did not have a quality offensive line, but with the New York Giants. Then at the wide receiver position, Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, C.D. Lamb, they balled out with Cullen Moore calling and designing the plays. We've seen A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith ball out the last two years. And for Devontae Smith, that's now three years in a row that he's played very well for Philadelphia. I think they're going to be able to do the same. And if the corpse of Jason Witten, who came out of retirement and produced under Cullen Moore, and Dalton Schultz and Blake Jarwin, they can have good seasons at the tight end position Dallas Goddard can as well. Now, he's going to be asked to block because that's a strength of his. But when you spread the field out, what happens when you also have a really good running game? The middle of the field, it's going to be open for Dallas Goddard to make some splash plays. Be sure to hit that sub button here on Philadelphia Eagles now. We are 196 people away from 75,000 subscribers. If you want daily coverage of the birds, lock us in today. Also, make sure you lock in Prize Picks if you're looking to get involved with some daily fantasy sports. Prize Picks makes daily fantasy so easy, where all you have to do is pick two or more players, choose more or less on their projected stats, and you can win up to 25 times your money. Head to prizepicks.com slash CLNS for a $100 deposit match. Our future selections for the birds. A.J. Brown, more than 7.5 receiving touchdowns all year. Jalen Hurts, more than 3,675 and a half passing yards. Saquon Barkley, I love this one if he can stay healthy. More than 1,055 and a half rushing yards. And then Derek Henry, because you have to pick a player from a different team in order for the pick to go through. More than 10 and a half rushing touchdowns. Win big money, withdraw your winnings within the Prize Picks app. Pick more, pick less, pick Prize Picks at prizepicks.com. Slash CLNS. Now, who will ball out under Vic Fangio here? As we flip the page to the defensive side of the pill, Devin White, linebacker. Safety, CJ Gardner Johnson. Bryce Huff, 
newly acquired edge rusher. Second year sophomore player Nolan Smith at edge rusher as well. And then Jalen Carter at defensive tackle. For Devin White, I've seen the comments. A lot of you are not high on him, or at least as high on him as I am. But Vic Fangio has a history of being a linebackers coach, and then as a DC, as a head coach, developing good linebackers. And I think it's going to bring the best out of Devin White. He's on a one-year deal, a prove-it deal. He's a former All-Pro. He has 4-4, four, 4-5 four, four, speed, great size, can get after the quarterback, good coverage skills, especially when targeted last year. He wants to prove that he can be a good player in this league. And with the quality coaching of Fangio, I think that happens. And I think he balls out. I think he's a good scheme fit as an off-ball linebacker. For C.J. Gardner-Johnson, Vic Fangio is going to be able to use C.D. Deuce everywhere. Safety, nickel, hybrid linebacker. And the last two years, he's intercepted a bunch of balls. And with the Eagles... Back in 2022, he tied with Justin Simmons for the most picks in the National Football League. Last year, he got hurt with the season-ending injury with Detroit, came back for the playoffs. But anytime he's on the field for an elongated period of time, it seems as though C.J. Garner-Johnson makes a big play. And I think Fangio is going to get creative where, with where he can play him. And then Bryce Huff. We're talking about a UDFA here who latched on with the New York Jets has grown and developed, but I think he's still just scratching the surface of what he can become. He's an emerging young pass rusher in this league who had 10 sacks last year, and Vic Fangio is going to allow him to kind of get aggressive, tap into his strengths, and he's going to have to fill in the shoes of Hassan Reddick, double-digit sack seasons the last two years for Philadelphia, and because of that, Bryce Huff is going to have some advantageous opportunities to notch some sacks for the birds. The same could be said for Nolan Smith, but I'm excited to see Nolan Smith going into year two, bulking up a little bit, the shoulder is healthy, the burst, the twitch, the athleticism, all of those traits are there for Nolan Smith to be a successful player in this league. And I've said this a couple of times here on the show. It's so hard to gauge who played well last year and who played poorly because the scheme and the play calling situationally and then game long was terrible. Vic Fangio just understands the nuances of football. And what do good coaches do? They put their players in a position to succeed. And I think that's going to happen with all of these players here. And then Jalen Carter. All world ability. We saw it at the start to the middle portion of last year. Now he understands what it takes to keep his level of stamina going throughout an entire NFL season. I thought he got tired at the end of last year because he's not used to playing that much at the NFL level. If he keeps his head on straight, Jalen Carter can be one of the best defensive tackles in the game, and Vic Fangio can help him do that. And then bonus, Cooper DeGene and Quinian Mitchell. DeGene, a chess piece. Public practice, OTAs on Wednesday. DeGene lined up as a nickel corner for the second string defense. But like C.J. Gardner-Johnson, you can kind of put him anywhere because he's a playmaker. And then Quinian Mitchell has those lockdown cornerback skills, and he's a good scheme fit for what Fangio wants to do. So with that, we leave you with this. Who will ball out under Kellen Moore and Vic Fangio? Let us know down in the comment section right now. Don't forget to hit that sub button. Thanks, as always, for tuning in.